Hey guys, TJ here. I just wanted to hop on live and talk about a couple of things that have just been on my mind, on my heart, and specifically what God's been speaking to me. I wanted to do this because frankly, I just get uh, tired of trying to create things that I think other people would like. I want to create things that I genuinely will like. And um, frankly, for a long time in my life, I've, uh, I've always had an, uh, a heart for God. I've had an interest in just talking about God. Like that's been um, since I was a kid, but it really wasn't a big part of my day-to-day -day discussions with people. I wasn't in a community that really believed in God. Um, and if they did, it was really more from like a religious standpoint rather than an actual relationship. And I can talk about that. And I do talk about that a little bit more in my podcast, but I wanted to actually just start creating some longer form content and video that you guys can listen to in audio. And I want to just talk about things that I want to talk about. And specifically today, just hearing God's voice. Um, it has been a really, really long journey um, in terms of like the process of hearing God's voice. It started out when I was younger, uh, just having intuition. And people would say to me, you, you just got to follow your gut. You have a great, like you have a great gut understanding, great intuition. And so you should just run with that. And I have always kind of resonated with the idea of having good intuition, but that breaks down when you start having what's called disassociation. And what that means is there's parts of you that you leave behind as you go through life. There's parts of you like a 13 year old self, a 20 year old self that you leave behind because of the pain that you've experienced. And what that means is as a human, our natural human tendency is to avoid pain and seek pleasure. And so for example, if we touch a hot stove, well, we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that we don't do that again because of the pain that we experienced. And similarly in relationships or other things that happen that cause trauma or things that we don't necessarily know how to process in the given amount of time that it has happened. And similarly, we have these experiences in our life where we just want to leave them behind and we don't choose to experience those experiences. And and the result is that we actually leave a part of ourselves in the past. And so as I've actually gone through the, the process of becoming whole again, uh, or healing, or, or getting back to full health, that's spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. As I've gone through that process, I've actually started to regain a lot more clarity on my own intuition, but also more importantly, um, the spirit of God that he gave me, and right, it's Holy Spirit, separate spirit. And really the ability to hear God's voice in a new way. And so what I want to do today is just talk about one specific way that God's voice has been, um, has been uh, present in my life today. And there's, there's so many stories here and I share more on the podcast um, in season three that'll be coming out here soon. Uh, if you're watching this before it comes out, but you can find my podcast at TJ Loeffler, TJ space L O E. And you can find it on Spotify or Apple, wherever you want to, where you want to listen to. Um, but there's right now we're in the middle of quarantine and there's, um, there's this program out called PPP. There's this program out called PPP. It's payroll protection program. It's meant for small business owners who are losing money during the quarantine. And the reality is like, it's very, it's going to be hard to find any small business owners that aren't losing money in this quarantine, just to be honest. Right. It's like, when you say like losing money, it's like, well, is that money I've lost today or money I've lost in three months from now? Because the reality is people are either holding on to their money uh, in ways that they weren't before, or the services that I offer are no longer, they're no longer interested, or I can't offer them in the way that I've been offering them. And so there's just a number of ways it's like, yeah, yeah, like almost everybody could apply for that. So uh, the whole point of the payroll protection program is to really stimulate the economy by uh, going after the small businesses, businesses under 500 employees, and a lot of the economy, which is independent contractors or self-employed, um, people like me who are maybe even paying other independent contractors. We have coaches that we pay that are you know, independent contractors, and, and we qualify for something like this, and we qualify for like two and a half months worth of pay uh, at a certain, certain threshold. And so, you know, for example, if you make over $100,000 a year, then you'll be capped out at the number uh, that, you're, that you're able to qualify for. That number though, the key is that number is forgivable. So you're able to receive money and the government will forgive that loan. Or in other words, it's basically money you don't have to pay back. 
uh, if you use it for payroll or other things that qualify. And so the point of that is to say, I want to talk about today why I turned down $20,000 and what that, what, like how that even just all comes into the whole idea about hearing the voice of God. Um, the, the thing that I have written down here is God's been speaking to me about some things lately. And I, and I use my phone as a, uh, as like a notepad sometimes often. And so I have written at the top here, I have written, um, you know, it's like, it says, you probably can see, whoop, you probably, I don't want to show you the entire note. Cause there's like, there's actually personal names. There. It says God, is that you? All right. God. And, um, and I think that's a good, question that just like it's for all of us to be asking ourselves and I heard something the other day and it was a statement closes your mind and a question opens your mind a statement closes your mind a question opens your mind and so I, I think it's something that all of us can be thinking on today is like asking the question God is that you and that's the first real step in inviting God into your life there's a revelation of God and there's a revelation of Jesus I'm talking about revelation of God but specifically for me it's like this is not just God it's Jesus who's the son of God who I believe is the one true God in, in triune form which is father son holy spirit three different roles one God just like I can be a son a brother husband I can also be God the father God the son God holy spirit and so it's one God different roles and I believe that God was speaking to me about something and I can't say it with 100% confidence and certainty because I, there's very little in my life I can say with 100% confidence and certainty, but I've learned that I can trust God's goodness over my mistakes or my own uh, understanding, my own wisdom or knowledge about certain events. And so when I was actually applying for PPP, because honestly, it's a wise thing to do. If you're a business owner, um, if you are somebody who has any sort of like business that you're tending to, right? Think about it like a garden, you're tending to a garden, tending to a business, you have a responsibility to try and do the best you can with that garden. And if somebody's saying, Hey, here's some water for your garden, it's been drought season. And, uh, you know, it might be good for you to have some extra water just in case that drought continues. It's like, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. And, um, especially if that water, uh, produces fruit that other people that then can eat from, which is what I see our business doing. So I'm like, man, why not apply for this PPP program, this payroll protection program? And then God was just kind of speaking to my heart and he was like, Hey TJ, Hey TJ. And I'm like, yes, what, what, you know, it's like that kind of, it wasn't an audible voice, but it was that kind of subtle, like, Hey TJ. And I was like, okay, I'm applying and I feel some sort of, it's not resistance, but it's just some sort of like pause. And I was like, God, what, you know, why, why am I having, I've become so much more sensitive to it now because prior to being more of my whole self, okay. Prior to that in my old self, I might not have been as sensitive to it. I might've just allowed busyness and distraction and my own goals and forward momentum and direction to carry me. But I was really, I'm much more sensitive to it now, not perfect, but much more sensitive to it now. And there's a lot of stories that go with that, um, that, that speak to that. But just this one is specifically, I was like, God, what is it? Like, what is it that I really sense um, is going on here? And he was like, Hey, can you trust me? Not PPP. Can you trust me? Not PPP. And I'm like, well, that rhymes. And that, that's a really interesting thought. Can you trust me? Not PPP. And I'm like, okay, well, there's a really important concept here. And this is hearing from the spirit. And so you can hear from the spirit, right? But that's spontaneity. And, and they say in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You don't know which way it's coming from or which way it's going. You just hear the sound blown. And so in the Bible, I'm like, okay, I know Holy Spirit. Like, I don't know which way it comes from. I don't know which way it's going. I don't know what this specific thought, trust me, not PPP. I don't know what that means yet, but I know the sound of it, right? I know, I know the character of God, okay? I know the character. And here's a really important thing. Like, you can know the sound of God's voice, right? You can know the sound of God's voice, like my voice, um, screaming at you from across the room in a crowded uh, party setting. And you can hear my voice, but it's different to hear my voice and, and know the character of who I am because it, you can hear somebody that sounds like me, but they might say something that doesn't sound like me. And so oftentimes people find, you'll find that there's false accusation in your life and it's because somebody doesn't see the true character of who you are. They might have heard something you said, but they don't know the character of who you are and therefore they take it for what you said, not the character of who you are. And then you find yourself in a season or situation of false accusation. Somebody's seen something about you that's not necessarily true. Uh, maybe it's not the harder intention of who you are, what you've done. 
And, uh, and now you find yourself in a sticky situation that's happened to me. It's happened to other people all the time, it's happened to Jesus all the time. Um, you know, and, and he certainly knows what it's like to be falsely accused. And so the point of that is to say, when you're listening for God's voice, it's really important to understand that there's not just the sound, but also the character, um, or the, the place from the sound, right. And, and knowing the character of God is really important. Okay, you can't know the character of God unless you have a relationship with him, start to get to know him. You can't know my character and start, unless you start to get to know me and, and, and see me over time, right? And see me in my faithfulness, right? Or I'm talking about God's faithfulness and how he shows that to you over time. Anyway, so I hear that voice and I'm like, there it is. And then on the other side of that coin, okay, on the other side of that coin of spontaneity or Holy Spirit is scripture and order. On the other side of spontaneity is scripture or order. And so the two go together. And with too much spontaneity, you have chaos. With too much order, you have religion. With too much spontaneity, you have chaos. With too much order, you have religion. In other words, you can do what's called quenching the spirit or spontaneity. And, and it's really important for us to understand this because the two go together, together in balance. Life is a, is a dance in a lot of ways. You'll, you, know, you, you can't have things too hot or too cold, right? You, you need to have some sort of balance of equilibrium. And our pH levels in our body need to be balanced. And, um, and, and just like in, in a, any relationship, right, there needs to be a healthy balance between uh, maybe having different perspectives and debating and coming into agreement and seeing things for uh, in alignment with, with each other. And so life is a balance of dance. And in that same kind of vein is this idea of spirit and uh, scripture or spontaneity and order. And I say this because it's really healthy to have this understanding when you're trying to learn the voice of God. Because if you don't have that understanding, then you're going to be maybe kind of like what I did, which led me to, to lose $100,000, which was like, I was trying to hear the voice of God. I heard the voice of God about 30 grand, made 30 grand in two weeks, like I had written down, like I thought I'd heard. And this was in the earlier stages of me starting to recognize, I hear the voice of God. And then I went for 100 and I was confused because I was like, God, is that you? Is that not you? And I didn't have any direction, confirmation or order to some of the things that I was hearing. Now, that notwithstanding the direction that I ended up going still ended up being a process where God used it to strengthen me and, and to help other people and to allow me to now have a business where hearing the voice of God is like a huge part of what, not just what we do, but who I am and what we do as a result, because uh, we'll do things that are maybe like backwards, upside down, like saying no to $20,000. That's, that's seemingly like going to benefit us and, and really help. Um, for the sake of what I'm about to say. So can you trust me, not PPP? And I was like, okay, God, I hear you. Now, can you show me some scripture? And my wife was reminding me, Savannah was reminding me of this. Uh, you know, she was like, hey, can you just ask for confirmation then? You know, because if you're having some trouble in thinking about, uh, you know, what this, what this means, can you have some confirmation? So I just asked the Lord, I was like, I don't know scripture like super, super well. I just asked the Lord, I was like, hey, can you give me some confirmation? He said, Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. So I went to Isaiah 51 and I read through uh, Isaiah 51 and I was open, right? Remember, remember it was like, God, is that you? And I was like, God, do you have something in here for me? And I was open-handed to what he might say or show me. And here's what I got. And it's really interesting because my fear uh, that started coming up, started creeping up actually through this whole process of thinking about receiving the PPP loan was false accusation. Like, Oh, TJ, there's somebody else that needs the money and you, um, you asked for the money and you didn't necessarily need it or whatever it might be. And, uh, and there was this like deep fear, false accusation. And I was like, wow, that's, that's deeply ingrained somewhere. There's a fear of not being understood. And so in Isaiah 51, what's really interesting is one of the first things talks about, it says, don't fear man's reproach don't fear man's reproach. And it was amazing because it was like, hey, can you trust me, not PPP? And don't fear man's reproach. So does that mean, oh God, do I take the money and I don't fear man, the false accusation? I didn't take it like that. I was just like, oh, good, good reminder. Don't fear man's reproach. It spoke directly to me and confirmed something that had started to rise up in me as I thought about what was really going on inside. Again, my sensitivity is higher because I've just become uh, more healthy over the last 10 years or so. And I've gone through a lot of uh, 
a lot of different things, experiences, adversity, whatever you want to call it. But I've also been going through counseling and network spinal analysis and physical training and working with dietitians and changing my body and changing what I eat and changing what I read and changing how I sleep and all of these things and working on myself and all of that, all of that combined with encounters with God is really like real physical encounters, like, you know, tears on the floor, just wild stuff that I never thought of. I grew up in a Catholic context. It was, this was not a part of having Holy Spirit encounters like that. There's many different ways I believe you can have encounters. I can't even think of all of them. I'm limited. But the ways that I started having encounters was not how I witnessed or saw encounters growing up. And so point of that is to say, after all of that, now I've kind of like come into uh, a lot more of a healthy sensitivity to hearing God's voice. And the other thing I said was, these are just a couple paraphrase notes I took away. Trust in the Lord, not in man's ways. Your hope is in salvation, not subsidies. And I didn't really, here's the thing. Like when you're living for Jesus, that's one thing. I just heard this the other day. It was really important. When you're living for Jesus, for God, your creator, when you're living for them, then you're like, it's always you're doing these things to try and do something to please them, et cetera, from a maybe, maybe not such a healthy place. But when you're living in Jesus, in God, in alignment with your creator, then you're doing, you're, you're really, you're the vessel and he's the water, right? He's the living water, not me. I'm not trying to create something. And what I see for a lot of people is there's just like striving of trying to be the living water. And it's like, oh, let me be the savior in this situation. Let me be this and be that. And it's like, no, it's God's power actually comes through me. God's knowledge, his wisdom comes through me and his wisdom confounds the wise. You know, it's like, he will have me maybe do things that seem foolish and it makes, you know, other people uncomfortable. But if, if I'm like really sensitive to him, if I'm having wisdom, right. If I'm having wisdom restraint, I'm not just uh, being unhealthy with the, with my own actions. If I'm taking responsibility for my own actions, but at the same time in alignment with what I believe God's hearing and speaking to my heart and I'm in touch with that and sensitive to that, well then, I can take whatever I'm thinking and I can really internalize that and allow that to say, okay, from my heart, all right, the heart can be deceitful under the old Testament or like pre Jesus on earth and the heart now with a renewed restored heart, instead of a heart of stone, heart of flesh, uh, where I can separate the difference between my own sinful or maybe natural tendencies to be selfish or whatever it might be. And God's desire for me and his design for me and his goodness and his character in me and my decision to really want to see that come to life. Well, then I can just take what I'm thinking and hear it in my heart and I can really just allow that to be and I don't have to strive and it can feel a lot more like just soaking and working from a place of a place of rest rather than performance. So as a result of all that, I decided, I remember um, there were a couple of places I'd applied for this PPP loan and there was a uh, second round of funding that came out. And I remember the different places I applied, <clears throat> excuse me. So I went and sent them an email and I was like, Hey guys, you know, I've made a decision to withdraw my application. And right as I did that, I was actually posting something on Instagram, which is funny, uh, you know, that I chose to, to do that. This was just for me. It was for my own heart. And, uh, and I was posting this on my, on my Instagram stories. If you don't already, come, come connect with me on Instagram, TJ Loeffler, TJ L-O-E-F-F-L-E-R. And, um, and I just, I put that little note that I had. If you saw my stories, I put that little note up there. It said, God, question mark. And I said, trust me, not PPP. And then Isaiah 51, my takeaways. I said, I was applying for PPP the other day and heard the voice of the Lord. Asked for scripture to confirm what I thought he was saying. And before I could get to the next post, which I'll read in a second, I got an email back from the guys who I applied with. And they said, oh, you're, you're basically approved. Are you sure you don't want the money? It's like 20 grand. And I, I had just posted this and I had thought to myself and I was like, man, that's really tempting. I was like, nope. It's, it's just not, I'd already made a decision and God does not, he's not a God of temptation. And, um, and so anyway, I want to follow that up with what I said. Could we use PPP? Definitely. Could we use the 20 grand? Definitely. We still have some debt as a business and personally and payroll pays me, which then allows me to pay down debt, to save, to build a family, to reinvest in the business, to do all these things that are going to sow seeds into all kinds of other people. I mean, we're working with people who we're seeing family reconciliation 
Uh, we're seeing relationships restored between spouses. We're seeing people become wealthier. We're seeing uh, people become physically healthier, having like identity transformation, becoming physically health healthier, having more energy, having more clarity. They're not taking their anxiety pills anymore, um, their, their anxiety medication anymore. And we're seeing real stuff like people are hitting goals that they've wanted to achieve for for a long time taking you know they're doing their uh fifth and final attempt on a on a certification exam and they're getting uh they're getting past that they they got their certification they otherwise would have to go a totally different trajectory in their in their career and in their life and and they're, they're so we're seeing like real results right and and it's crazy i have more stories about how we're seeing some of those results because a lot of we can't take credit for a lot of we take responsibility uh, for our own actions. We just can't take credit for some of the things that's like, whoa, I didn't, I couldn't have thought of that, that I couldn't have orchestrated that opportunity or this thing happening, right? Some of that's outside of our control. And so that's my point when I say that. So I was saying we still have some debt. And even though we've been growing, we've been growing 175% every year for the last few years from zero base. Um, but 175% top line revenue growth a, a year over year. It's just like, man, we're a healthy business. We're helping people. We're doing, this would be so valuable for us. And this would be valuable for, for us to have and continue to grow. We employ people. Uh, we're doing important work, ripples through individuals and families and communities and businesses and saying no, essentially to free money isn't about, um, and this was the key. It's not about being unwise and like saying, uh, you know, well, I heard from God and so no, I'm not doing it. Or it's not even about being, and I said extra holy. It's not like, well, I heard from God and I'm not going to take money. No, it's neither one of those. Um, it's about responding to what the father tells me. It's about responding to what the father tells me. And I was on the phone with my sister earlier and it was a really interesting conversation because our dad passed in 2017, really big part of our story. And, um, and she was talking to me about how there are certain times how she'll she'll ask like what would dad do what would dad do because we you know difficult situations like yeah what would dad do our dad like had such wisdom he was such a man of wisdom and uh he's such a man of leadership we were talking about that and our parents are just like such great people um are my mother and 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 my father who passed and and so you know she was like yeah i think about what dad would do and frankly yes i think about what my dad earthly dad would do but i also think about what my heavenly dad would do and that's, that's higher level thinking. And that's where I've been in the last five years that's really taken my life to a whole nother place. It's not to say that your parents don't have wisdom, knowledge, all that, but it is to say that maybe God has a greater perspective than your dad, your mom, your spouse, your counselor, your coach, your whoever. And so I always tell people that we're working with, I'm like, you can't look to me as your authority. You have to have that personal relationship with God. We've really had a, a, a very specific focus this year on helping people understand, hear the voice of God. And we don't make it some like magic show. We don't make it something really special, spectacular. It's like, it's special, but it, it's really simple. And so I was saying, hey, you know, it's not about being unwise with money or being extra holy. It's about responding to what the father tells me and not allowing money to be my priority or focus like it had become or has become in the past. And that's, that's ultimately why I said no to, to 20 grand. And um, we, and, you know, because I make decisions with my wife and, and we're together in that. And she's like, hey, I support you and I respect you and I trust leadership. I trust your leadership. And, and in that, I trust her leadership. It's a, it's a dual thing, right? And, um, and mainly it's our relationship with God individually, our relationship with Jesus individually. So all of that's to say, that's why I'm choosing to trust God and not PPP. And I'm excited to have a follow-up story to this. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Thanks for, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, um, I'm sharing a lot more information uh, over the podcast. So TJ Loeffler, uh, his audio channel, his third party, that's me. Um, his uh, third person, that's me. His audio channel. But um, we also have a lot more resources that I send out over email. So you can sign up for the podcast uh, on my website, tjloeffler.com, and you can sign up to get emails there as well. Find me on Instagram, find me on LinkedIn. Those are the two places you'll find me the most. And I'd love to connect with you there, especially if something resonated with you here. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening.